Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now, one of the most exciting ways of catching a fish need not necessarily be with bait. It can be with a lure, which represents a small, injured, dying, or fleeing fish. It can be made of metal, it can be made of plastic. It's basically an artificial. Okay, so you've got to fool the fish into taking something that they think is real. Uh-oh, it's not. By which time, it's too late. Anyway, one of the hardest fighting fishes you can catch is the jack. Now there's a wide variety of species in the jack family, from the giant Carambisi, the GT, what we call giant Cravalli jacks, that's as known, rated by the IGFA as true game fish, really, really strong. But there's lots of little species there as well. Not so little actually. Jack Cravals, Bluefin Trevally, loads of different types of jack species, black jacks, lots of different species. But you need a few tips on trying to catch them on lures. Basically, you need to be around where the bait fish are going to congregate, and sooner or later the jacks will home in and find them. Might be dawn, might be dust, the usual good feeding spells that you get fishing from the shore. But they can turn up at any time. And if you're all geared up for them, wow, you could be in for some really fantastic fishing. Well, let's get down onto the rocky headlands, and I'll give you a few tips and hopefully get to see a bit of action on some jack fishing with artificial lures. It's very, very rocky, very, very volcanic up here. In fact, there's a sign up the top that even tells you you can't go wrong. It says extremely dangerous when you're fishing off the rocks. So I'm gonna be watching the swell out there. I'm gonna be using my uptide rod. They normally use these big wedges, but I've got a small one just there, purely because I want to try. If I have to lose a lure, I want to lose a small one first. And I've, I've gone from the split ring and tied straight onto the top of the actual metal body. And instead of the split ring at the bottom, I just used some wire, 150 pound wire. So hopefully I can find out where the, those, those blackjacks are and at least have a chance of catching that first fish of a new species. There's nothing like a PB of a first species. Yeehaw. When you look at the landscape around you, when you're shore fishing, you should always look at the type of breakdown of rocks and cliffs, be it, in this case, volcanic lava, but it can also be granite, and look and try and imagine that carrying on underneath the seabed, underneath the water, because invariably, if there's features underneath the water, that in turn is gonna draw the bait fish in close. If the bait fish come in close, then, you are definitely going to find the predators won't be too far behind. Just try and find a comparison with somewhere like the plains of Africa with all the game that are traveling across it and sooner or later those predators are going to find them. In fact, here's a predator with a pair of white legs. My goodness, that man in the yellow jumper, he should have a license to have legs like that out in the sunshine. I should think I would need at least factor 85 on those legs. But it doesn't matter because I'm hooked up to a strong fighting fish here. Give me a hell of a scrap on a lure. And what is it? Do you know what? I can't even remember. If you're moving around over rocks, especially these jagged lava rocks, although I appear to be diving around there like a gazelle. In fact, if I fell over there, and Dave did, Big Dave, who was in the picture earlier, did fall over and opened his hand up on those rocks quite deeply, you are gonna get cut. So be very, very careful in any rock fishing situation, even here as I'm trying to get a bit of a handle, or in this case, a bit of a hand on the 80 or 100 pound leader to try and bring this fish up to the camera for you. There could be a swell coming at any moment. Please be careful out there. Don't try this at home. I'm out of breath from that excursion over the lava encrusted rocks and the breaking waves. Well, what a fish, folks. I'm writing that one down as an amberjack. Any of you jack experts tell us if it's decent uh, amberco jack. Who knows, different types of jack. I think it's an amberjack, small amberjack. Not that small, is he? And he hit that as I speed cranking the jig across the surface and four black jacks were following it. Really pleased with that fish. What a shore fishing spot. This is still a jack species, we're after the black jack, but hey ho, I'm not gonna argue with this one. But guys, I really enjoyed catching those fish, 
certainly not over yet, still yet to catch the elusive blackjack. But I've already learned three tips. The first one is when you wind in occasionally, the jigs will just bump the rocks. As you go to lift it up, the wind will catch a leader or the line, you can't help that. But every time it bumps the rocks, it's going to spec the hook over. So I suggest take either a stone with you, or I've normally got a file, and every so often, just put a little bit of a point on those tips there. Just You can feel it. Sometimes you can actually look and see a tiny little speck over there. That's just enough to lose the fish. So I suggest a little file or stone, sharpen the hooks up. Now another thing is we've noticed, if there's, well, there's not been any fish breaking on the surface here, maybe it's the activity of the fish we have been catching, but the birds, the frigate birds have been coming and they'll dive and they will pick your lure up and I have heard they will take the whole lure away. Could get worse, you could have to try and unhook them and get a hook in your hand and a beak as well. You don't want either of those two. So I found by using not poppers, this is subsurface, I can skip this along the surface, they'll still follow it in as the bird swoops down, just pause, it just lets it sink, they go over the top and you can start out on the top again. Two totally awesome tips. The third one, most important. Trying to get that grouper just now? Well, climbing down on this lava rock, it's sharp. Trust me, in the excitement and heat at the moment, now I didn't even know I cut my knee open. So it's something, you know, just be aware of it. Those rocks are really sharp out there. Now tackle, you can use a regular fixed ball reel like this. What I would say is don't drop below about 20, 25 pound line, something like that. Yes, you might cut down a little bit on your casting distance, but it's worth it for the safety because these fish fight hard. A good retrieve ratio. This is a much bigger fixed ball reel. It's got a 4.1 to 1 retrieve ratio, which really, even then, is not that great for fast winding, but you can make do with it. You know, you can use it. Well, it does have very big fish. If you should you hook a really big jack, it has a drag setting that can put on there 30 kilos of drag power. That's 66 pounds. Now, personally, I'd like to catch a 66 pound jack off the shore. I think it's almost impossible, I should think, other than jacks in shallow, flat, sandy water, but I don't know if a rock might be tough. A big ball grip there, so that's good. So, get yourself set up. I'm personally using, I'm not gonna go out and invest in vast quantities of money in an, an alleged spinning rod, specially made for it. I've used an uptidy rod, which throws seven to eight ounces, changeable tips, but it does have an extendable butt. So I can cast out, as it goes through the air, just before it hits the water, push it up, twist it, lock it, and then I'm ready for fighting the fish, and it's much better balanced, you know, I just use this as an extender for casting. Don't even know if they make these now, but it's a dead handy rod. So there you are, there's a tackle. Let's get back down there, and see if that guy's ever gonna catch anything. Don't forget to send some of your cast, not just out to sea, but right along the edge where the cliff faces, uh, rock, uh, you know, the rocks are all dropping down. Look at these jacks. And if you look on the left, you see the odd jack. This is a shoal of trigger fish, but the lighter, bigger colored fish are the jacks. And they're following this lure across the surface, but just I've run out of water to try and get them to take. Occasionally, it's worth a trip or an excursion away from the rocks, looking at open beaches because in a big bay like this, the bait fish can get driven or herded close into the sand and almost, and in fact not almost, it, they do get driven up on the beach and you can actually catch big fish, tunas, jacks, rainbow runners and others as well, barracuda pushing in right up to the edge of the shore. And just look, this is probably a 100 foot, 150 foot drop to the water, but if I zoom in with a camera lens, you can see this fish down there and what about this for a predatory crab? It's taking a metal lure. I mean, that's some sort of crab. I don't think that's the one I want to put on my hook. So what are you going to do when you hook a fish up? Basically, if you've got a jack on the end, you've got to fight it pretty hard because he will strip line off you. And if he can go out and sort of hang a left or hang a right, he's going to cut you off on the rocks. So you've got to do your best to get him out as soon as you can. And this one was the fish I was after blackjack I think it was on a little spinning lure there you don't need giant lures 
and you can either put a treble or you can put a single and this one just nicked on the single hook there lovely looking fish hard fighting scrapper take the hook out and any of these fish that's a, that's a almaco jack nice big almaco jack you can put them back there's great fish to be had around these rocky headlands a lot of the time small what can i call them little bays in the rock it could only be the size of a kitchen table but it might be somewhere that those jacks have trapped the bait fish if they can trap them in there then there's a good chance they get them all balled up and you got a good chance of catching them These jacks can travel at incredible speeds. You have no trouble winding as fast as you can for them to catch that lure. Trust me, it can be a popping plug. It can be a lure that's skipping on the surface. It can be, be subsurface. They have no trouble catching those lures. What you do want is really a fairly high retrieve reel. Otherwise, with a low retrieve reel, you're gonna be cranking like crazy, just trying to get that lure fast enough. And make a point of looking for the seabirds. Those frigate birds are telling me there's a shoal of bait fish out there being herded by predators. I have no idea what predator they are, but you have got to crack that lure out and retrieve it through those birds as many times as you can. The more times you can cast out while those birds are there, you know you're in the kill zone for predators. And if you don't bring fish like grouper in fast enough, they're gonna dive straight into the rocks on the bottom and they can and will snag you up and you lose a lure. Now, primarily, jacks can be caught off the shore near inshore reefs. But while trolling on the way to the tuna grounds, we hit one jack on a lure, wound it in, and like a lot of species, others came with it. But when I put the underwater camera over the side, my God, you should have seen the shoal of amberjacks, almaco jacks, blackjacks, piling in, just trying to basically grab the lure out of this other fish's mouth. I can't tell you how many were there. It was, it was hysteria at the time. The fish were actually hitting the camera, trying to eat the camera, can you believe? Oh my God, wait till you see this. Oh, for a fly rod. Now just watch the next clip. Bang, they're trying to eat the camera, can you believe? I've actually got jacks. These are Amaco jacks, um, black jacks, and hammer jacks that want to eat the camera lens. But even though our skipper was trying to hold them around us for a little while for me to get films with the bait, as soon as they eat those two or three bits of bait, they're gone. Look how fast they fade away. There must have been, I don't know, 50 or 100 fish in that school within seconds they disappeared. They came up quickly and they disappeared just as quick, despite a few extra bits of chum being thrown in. And that's how fast those predators can come in and grab a lure and disappear at the same time. Okay guys, here is totally awesome tip number 544. Having had many of my lures destroyed by the trigger fish and the jacks, I decided I had no more um, rubber bodies to put back on the jig head, so I used, wait for this, a balloon. I'd had the balloons which I kept for when I was going out shark fishing and thought, do you know what, I'm gonna just try a rubber balloon. So what I did is I stretched the neck of the balloon over the front of the head so you can see it's held there, stretched over the top. I've got a piece of something like 12 pound fishing line, eight 12 pound fishing line. I just tie really a half hitch around the main leader. And then I just slide that loop back over the sort of the nose, the front end of the jig. I'm also looking for fish at the same time because I'm waiting for birds to show or fish to bust. And then I just bind it around a few times on the balloon and hey ho I'm back in action just a few turns finish off with a couple of half hitches and I'm back in action lure fishing again 
Now, yes, all you lure buffs and tackle tarts out there must think I am completely bonkers. There's no way the guy's gonna catch anything on a freaking balloon. Get real, man. Okay, we'll find out. Snip the tag on, tag end off. Find the spot where you know there's some fish. They've been bait fish being pushed up in the side. The other guys in my group are out on the headland, but I've decided to come in here. Check that drag as always. Plenty of drag there. I'm gonna cast out and let's see if it's any good. Am I actually gonna catch something on a balloon? Here it comes guys, just let it drop down. I can see this fish boiling all around it, jig and whammo. There we go, a fish hooked up on the balloon. Is it a pound? No, is it a trigger fish? Is it two kilos? No, it's a pretty big grouper guys. And provided I can get it out, I will be climbing down there as close as I dare to the water's edge and see if I can show it to you. I can do no more than tie a balloon up onto a jig head, cast it out, and show you guys it does actually work. Well, ha ha ha, there we go, my friends. A lovely big grouper, and there's the balloon tied to the jig head in its mouth. Not faked, you saw it all from the casting out to the hookup to the landing and as I'm not very hungry at that particular time, you'll probably see it released as well. There's no question a red balloon can do the trick and get you out of trouble when those jig heads are mess messed up. You can still make some form of lure out of it. Not only that, I went on to catch even more fish with it for the rest of the afternoon. Ho, 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 what an angler. By the way, they're 10 99 each. Now, catching a fish with a balloon on a jig head is somewhat unusual and may never have been shown on YouTube before. But listen, you can use something else to add a little bit of movement and flutter and activity, if you like, to your jig head. Don't just dump it and think, well, I've had the lure trashed. Let me show you what can happen to a lure and let me show you what you can do to it. Over to the workshop. Okay, we're having call on a jig head with a balloon. I've got to go that step further. Now, when you're in a remote country, very often, there isn't a tackle shop just up the road, but let me show you this. This is what can happen to a lure when species like triggerfish or jack start stripping at it. That's a soft rubber lure, and in two casts, that's all, if you can see that hopefully, I've got left. They virtually, well, they have totally destroyed it. This one, one cast, one cast is chopped off the tail. That lure is totally useless. Now you'd think you couldn't get anything else other than a, they obviously don't want to hit jigs. Well, maybe they do. What do you need? Some of these. What you do is you cut them up, just cut them once, twice, line them all up, and if they've got little crinkles in them, so much the better. If they're different lengths, it doesn't really matter. I just get the four tassels like that, if you like. I lay them on the back of the jig head there that has already been chewed. A piece of fishing line, I think I'll use about 12 pound fishing line there with a loop, just a slip knot. I bind it, oh, whip it all over like this. Lovely and tight. Finish off with the knot of your choice, in my case, a half hitch. You'll please note that this has taken me possibly little more, little more than a minute. And I assure you, having used this many times before and had it documented. In fact, Phil was with me, Phil Williams, and he got pictures of the fish I caught on it. I caught as many fish on this, Jack's, casting that out as I did with all the fancy rubber gizmos, gadgets, and colors, because this, this tassel has way, way more action than a lot of lures out there on the market. So you might want to invest in some jig heads and some highly inexpensive rubber bands. Let's get back fishing.
just watch those swells when they come in as you can see they really do surge in and something like this when i'm fighting a fish it's real easy to get sidetracked this one's got me in the bottom uh oh we're gonna lose it don't concentrate on the fish concentrate on the swell gram otherwise you'll get washed off got the fish free but lost it oh dear the language was not good however shortly afterwards i got yes another hookup i did actually find uh, telling you people i didn't find it was as good with the jacks with that foamy water there and i lost that one as well but when it's all foamy and bubbly do you know to be honest i don't think they can see any lures in the water quite so well I did, however, notice I was getting groupers, but I was, to be honest, I was more concerned about the size of these huge swirls crashing in. They sweep round and swing me off my feet. So when you're there, just be careful. But as I say, foam-wise, bubble-wise, when it was clear like this, I did better than I did when it was really, really rough. And here I am getting stripped out by something. What is it? It's certainly a great predator. Bear in mind, this is also on my up tide rod, which I would catch far, far bigger fish on, and probably even have a, a lesser bend than this in it, certainly without line getting stripped off. Oh dear, another one lost. I wonder what Graham's language was like then. But a few casts later, we're in again. Those jig heads, those popper lures, they certainly work. This one looks like a big jack. can't emphasize enough when you're fishing for species like jacks they are digging and digging and digging and this jack here had my big up tide rod folded right over even when it's thrashing on the surface you need to keep a good bit of pressure a to hold those hooks in and also to stop it diving in the snags because that is the problem you know you can get buried in one of those lava encrusted rocks down there and uh, they'll cut that in a flash because they are very very sharp rocks a you don't want to fall over and cut yourself b you want a, a nice thick 80 or 100 pound leader that enables you there's a nice a nice blackjack on a popper giant popper there and if, you, if you've got that heavier leader you can at least get a bit of leeway when you drag a fish up on the rocks before you release it always as well check that leader for chafes and abrasion you know just in case you get a giant fish like a, a yellowfin tuna and then you know you're going to get bust off aren't you so if there's any sign of abrasion on the leader my suggestion is cut it off and retie or better still tie in a fresh say six seven eight foot of uh 80 or 100 pound mono leader there just to allow for that abrasion on the rocks Now just after Kev hooks up, if you watch my lure, you'll see the jacks come up after my lure. There, you can see his fin sticking out of the water and I just basically ran out of water. I can't wind anymore, but I noticed a lot of these takes did come very, very close to shore. And I feel that's where these jacks are so used to chasing in bait fish like scad close into the rocks and then trapping them almost up against the rocks. Oh, bye, come again. They're so used to trapping them up against the rocks that I feel that's why they're used to grabbing them at the last minute. So if you're doing this fast retrieving, fast winding with a lure, be it a, a, a wedge, a metal lure, a diving, you know, Rapala type lure, then definitely, definitely just keep an eye out for those last minute hits and be very careful climbing down any cliffs that you haven't seen before. You want three points of contact when I was doing uh, mountaineering climbing three points of contact at any one time don't go jumping around there if you can help it well yeah okay we all do that but I'm just trying to give you a bit of health and safety it's a long way down there and for a non swimmer it's not good is it
Another complexer class is just on the edge of the white water. As I said earlier, the actual white water is not particularly great. I found, anyway, I can only speak from personal experience. If it's deep, give it a pause, let that lure sink to the bottom if you're not using a popper on the surface, and then start it back. So you're pulling the lure actually through the clear water rather than the white water. Now look at this. Is this not a spot to fish from hell? Jagged pieces of lava rock sticking up a pounding swell that's coming in, a lot bigger than it looks on the camera incidentally, but yes, Mr. Idiot Head has to have a cast there. I can't resist it. It's a bay that probably nobody else has cast in before. Looks a bit dodgy, it certainly does, Graham. And where are you gonna get the fish from? Oh dear, you won't be pulling it out the rocks anytime soon down there if you do hook it. Please don't cast, Graham. No, too late, he casts. Does anybody out there have a spare brain? If you do let those weighted lures like wedges sink down deep, you can actually use what's called the countdown technique, which is as it hits the surface, you would let it go say three seconds and you retrieve back. Next cast, let it go five, six seconds. Don't snag up, fine, start it back. Sooner or later you'll hit the bottom. You're either gonna get your lure back and that's gonna tell you the number of seconds that it's taken to hit the bottom. So thereby if it takes eight seconds to hit the bottom, you wanna start retrieving at seven upwards and look at the size of the grouper here. And this one was caught by using a countdown technique. I'd already luckily got my lure back and felt it hit the bottom. So it's a good technique. Just find the bottom by using a countdown technique and then come maybe two seconds up from it or above until you find where those fish are. Just make sure when you've got that reel locked up that these fish are so powerful they could actually tip your centre of gravity over and top you over if you're not expecting it. Especially when it's a straight up and down fight, those jets can really, really dig. Be aware, there's a lot of pressure on the reel drag and it doesn't take much when you're standing up high to get toppled over. So keep your centre of gravity low if you can. Wouldn't put the reel on back one, I'd let the drag do the job. And here you go, there's a nice, that's an Almaco Jack on a surface popper. There you go guys, that's what this popper fishing is about. I didn't come with enough poppers, but we fished like this. We're down to about our last one or two poppers before we go home. Hope you've enjoyed watching it on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Keep watching out for the next awesome episode. For me, I'll get this guy back and get out there again. come here for this is a sort of blackjack you can catch oh. what about that one guys that's got to be double figures see the size of it and you can see that big sloping forehead which is when they get bigger I'm gonna come up just before I get sucked off the rocks yeah right grand pull and packing up fishing get real just watch this final clip and see the actual cast, the retrieve. 
Ooh, the hook up, catch and release, all in one sequence. Man, it makes me want to go fishing, and I was there. But I'll be back someday, so keep searching through this misty hay. It's only a 